spoken. Florentino Perez has spoken and we're going to break down this interview that he gave to um, El Chiringuito. So I don't know whether that's a TV channel or something. So we're just going to break this down, just give you some tidbits. So I think what's, you know, the, the man in the know for Fabrizio Romano did is like he did a really good breakdown where he sort of um, breaks down um, all of the, uh, basically the key points from the interview that hung by Gibson. We're going to try and break it down. So, um, where do we start here? Where do we start here? So, this is an interesting one. It says that, so Florence, why aren't UEFA and La Liga salaries public? What happens salaries have been reduced like everyone else during the pandemic? We need more transparency. We know the salary of LeBron James, but we don't know the salary of the UEFA president. Which is fun. And I think, I was watching um, ESPN and I think this is what um, um, I think it's I've gotten I've also the name the man the former Man City QPR defender who says that he found it strange how in America everybody not knows everyone's salary it's, it's public knowledge but in in Europe no one knows that so this is again is a digger UEFA which is you earn a lot of money and we want more bang for our buck. We want more bang for a buck. And we know the value that we bring. Why aren't we getting more bang for a buck? Which is why either you negotiate or we're going to have to create a new model. Um, I'm going to say, okay, okay, oh, no, no, I think here. Yeah, let, let me go. Let me go down. Um, so he says that we have not invited PSG yet. We're going to talk with many clubs and explain to them about the Super League project. If Bayern refuses to join, it won't cancel. Don't worry. We'll hire some of the best referees in the world. So they haven't asked Bayern yet. And they've not yet invited PSG. So I think people have said, oh, Bayern have rejected. thing have rejected. So they haven't really asked these guys yet. Because I think the key thing, which is what will make this thing pretty much pop off, is if once they now ask a PSG and so forth, then I think that's where things will pop up. Will pop off. Things will pop up. Once... They ask those guys and they say, what's up? That's when things are really going to pop off. Um, so they've not asked them yet. The new Champions League format for 2024 is something absurd. I have no personal interest in making this Super League. I'm not the owner of Real, but only the president because Real is owned by the members. I only want to save football. So obviously, I think there may be some stuff lost with translations. I think you need to, in order of paraphrasing, but I think what he's saying here is the new format that they've that they've they've shown from the UEFA is bogus. It's crap. It's stupid. It's dumb. And the funny thing about it is that that new format is pretty much similar to what they've done. So because that new format is about protecting the elite clubs and ensuring that the elite clubs get get, get a that their position is protected. But as um, Perez says, it's about finances. It's about numbers. It's about money. Why is it that we're only getting 100 or 120 million for winning this Champions League? Guys, we know that this is one of the biggest and most watched sporting competitions in the world. We know that Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man United and so forth are amongst the most followed, supported clubs in the world, on the planet. And why? And but the, the money doesn't reflect that. So you have to ask UEFA, where is the money going? Where is where is the money? Where is the TV money? Where is the broadcast money? Where is because it has to exist. So either you are pocketing it into your own pockets, or you're really bad at marketing. It's either one one, one of those two because something doesn't add up. Either you are class A brick at marketing, or you're pocketing the money that should be that, that should be going to these guys who are the reason why you gen, why you generate so much interest. Um. This Super League is not for the rich, but it's to save football. If this continues, football will disappear, and by 2024, we would already be dead. This is the only way to save everyone, big, medium, and small clubs. Um, there's another thing that he wanted to, I wanted to say here. Uh, that's because I think it's about, about, that, about the money, man. Um... So, 
For, okay, here we go. So, football must evolve like everything in life. Football has to adapt to the times we live in now. Football is losing interest. TV rights are decreasing. We wanted to do the Super League. The pandemic has given us honesty. Now we are all ruined in football. So, yeah, I don't really know what that means. So, for me, I always say that, look, this was always going to happen. It was always going to happen. And I think people who are shocked by this, you're not living in the real world. You are not living in the real world if you are somehow shocked by this because um, this is the biggest sport in the world. The biggest sport in the world that is watched by millions upon millions. Anybody with half a marketing brain knows that this is a multi-billion dollar business that, that you can generate with all of these big clubs. So it goes to my other point. You wait for either you're the your class A break at marketing, or you're not giving these guys their proper share of the money and you're pocketing so much of that cash. Something doesn't add up. Um yeah, here we go. Here at Real Madrid, we've lost a lot of money. We are all going through a very bad situation when there's no profit. The only way is to play more competitive games during the week. The Super League will save the clubs financially. So I was looking at I was watching ESPN FC and I think it was Marcotti, I was, it was Marcotti and Shaka Hislop were saying, and they said that revenues are up, money's up and so forth. So this notion that the clubs are suffering and, and so forth makes no sense because revenue is up. Um, we, the fact of the matter is we just don't know. Because Gao and Shaka, you've not looked at their books. So you can't just assume, that, oh, revenues are up, so therefore you must be doing well. You just don't know. Guys, in the past 12 months, I've heard about Barcelona are bankrupt. Real Madrid have no money. This club, they have no money. We have no money. We can't buy any players. We can't afford it. We can't afford that. Those are the stories I keep on hearing. Those are the stories that I keep on hearing. So, um, if it's a case of we're losing money and so forth, we have, to, we have to do something. And I think that, guys, this makes financial sense. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you want to be... And we know we love football and we want to be football purists. I get it. I understand we want to be football purists. But guys, this is a business. And if you want to deny this being a business, I want to say, no, no, in, respect the integrity of football. You're not living in the real world. And you have been living under the rock for the past few years because this, this monster was created by your Premier Leagues, La Ligas, and, and so forth. Specifically the Premier League who created an environment for these owners to exist. So blame the Premier League for allowing, for not enforcing a 50 plus one rule like the Germans did. Um, okay, let's just see. Football needs to change to be more attractive globally. Instead of making the Champions League, because it loses the interest as it had in 1950, change comes. And even at the time, FIFA and UEFA were against it, but that's how football changed. So I'm talking about how... Football needs, needs to change. Things need to evolve. And I'll say again, these guys know, especially these owners know that you are not taking full financial advantage of how extremely lucrative and profitable these clubs are. You're not. And guys, again, we have to deal with the reality. These are businessmen. These are businessmen and this is a global game. You don't own your club. You in Spain... You're not London, you're in Manchester and so forth, you don't own your club. And you form 10% of the fanship, or 20%. The 80% are guys that exist globally, and that's the reality. You can hate me all you want, hate me all you want, but guys, I'm only just giving you facts. And the debate about facts that you can't dispute them. Facts don't care about your emotions. Facts are just facts. So I'm just here just to give you facts. You can view it as you want, but I'm just here just to give you, like, this is what it is, this is what exists. Um... The attractive thing in football is playing between big clubs. The value for television increases and more income is generated. It's not just the rich who won the, the Super League. We're doing it to save football because it's at a critical moment. Guys, the pandemic exists. The pandemic is the reason why Warner Brothers decided to produce HBO Max and their new movies. They will release theatres 
and streaming at the, at the same time. People hated them for it. And there were many directors that said, I'm going to walk out on you because I don't want you guys to be releasing my film um, at home and in the theaters at the same time. They, they say, oh, horrible, 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 horrible. Right now, HBO Max is one of the most profitable streaming models in the world. And they have been extremely successful. And I think these guys, they look at that and say, my gosh, if ever there's a time to create a football streaming model of the biggest clubs in the world, it's now. Obviously, people are slowly um, opening up and so forth. But even when people open up, streaming is, streaming is the new thing. Adapt or get left behind. Adapt or go left behind. Things change, things will always evolve. Adapt or get left left behind. Again, don't hate me. Don't hate me. I'm not, I'm not the bad guy here. I'm not, I'm not the villain. I'm just reading the room. I'd love football to be pure. I'd love football to, um, to award the, the little guy and look out for the, for the little guy. I love the, the underdog. Rock is one of my favorite films. But in life, you have to be realistic. And you can be like, no, no, I would, no, 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 I was fine. This is wrong, this is wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me just see. Uh, so he says, we will speak to you, as we said in the statements, we have to discuss with UEFA the five spots available in the Super League. UEFA has been working on the new formats of the use of the English Champions but honestly, I don't understand. We want to save football. So again, he's just saying that... Um, they're not really for that new format. They're not for, for how it works and so forth. And they're not happy, happy with it. You know, and he pretty much wants to say what's up with this new format that can really um, pop off fin financially for your boy. Um, so, yeah, so, so it says UEFA, I think I must say, but UEFA is a monopoly and it needs to be more transparent. We want to save football for the next 20 years. It is, it is in a time of serious danger. If you win, you receive 120 to 130 million from UEFA. With Super League, you will earn much more. Again, those numbers make no sense. 120, 130, it makes no sense. And there's another key one. Real Madrid, Man City, and Chelsea, as other clubs of Super League, will not be banned from the Champions League or domestic leagues. 100%, I'm sure. Impossible. Uh, that against the players banned from international competitions and national teams, according to UEFA, don't worry, this will not happen. They won't be banned if they join the, the Super League. So again, I think that's just him pretty much flexing and saying that um, because I think he believes that the, the, the law is on, is on his side and that, that them trying to ban them is unlawful. So remember, like, Sheffron has said and said, oh, these guys, we're going to look to, to ban all of them, but you have to do so le legally. You have to do so legally, man. Um, let me just see. Oh, yeah, I noticed it says that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can read that. Um, how's your notes? Okay, PSG. Yeah, that's where it is. Oh, he said, President Shefferin insulted Andrea Agnelli today. It is not possible. It's crazy to discuss a president of a world club like Juventus. This is something unacceptable. The effort must change. We want a pre. We don't want a president who insults other presidents. So again, beef. You know, Sheriff and Hudson had the words, call them snakes, call them liars, and so forth, call them backstabbers. And parents are like, nope. You can't operate like, like that, which just shows you that I think these big clubs know that they are in a stronger position because they're the big clubs. And these guys know that globally, they have that reach. And globally, people will follow them wherever they, they, they go. They know this. They know the bulk of their support will follow them wherever they go. And again, guys, we're dealing with facts here. This is, the, this is not emotion. These are facts I'm giving you. Um, so I think this, this Super League is not for the rich, but it's to save football. If this continues, football will disappear, and by 2024, we would already be dead. I so said this is the only way to save football, to save everyone, big, medium, and small clubs. And guys, remember, I think just to reiterate, guys, they're not leaving the domestic leagues. The only way they leave the domestic leagues is if they get thrown out. So then it's like cutting your nose to spite your face. So people say, oh, this is the end of the Premier League, them leaving and so forth. No. If they leave, that's on you. They're very happy to stay because, again, I repeat, Premier League 
If you throw out these six teams, your league is finished financially. That is the fact. That is the reality. You throw them out, your league is finished financially. You will not get the viewership or the numbers. And all that viewership will go to this one league. And yes, they would love the money from the Premier League. But again, these are Americans running this stuff. If this stuff is marketed well, they will be financially secure in this European Super League. Again, guys, I'm talking facts. I'm not talking emotions. I'm not here to be so I'm not here to be subjective. I'm here to be objective. I'm here just giving you financial hardcore objective facts. Again. Um so he said Real Madrid and other Super League clubs will not be excluded from this Champions League. It won't happen. The law protects us. This is impossible. And that's the, the, the key thing here. I'm not a, a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. So I don't know whether it is lawful for them just to be thrown out of the competition. Now, I'm just using my logic here against I'm not a lawyer. Well, UEFA, that is a, that is their competition. So if UEFA are in control, UEFA can just say, no, nope, this referee is not allowed. You're not allowed here. And these officials are not going to go through. And we won't, we won't even register this whole thing because, again, it's, it's called the UEFA Champions League. So this might be a case of heading over to the court of arbitration for for for, for sports, you know. Um, uh, so yeah, Barcelona are going through a difficult economic situation. Laporta immediately understood and accepted, like all the great clubs in the world, this Super League will save the entire world of folk football. Guys, people kept telling me that they are bankrupt. And um, what is the alternative? The vaccine is still getting rolled out. What, what is the vaccine rollout now in, in Spain? I'm hearing that in people in Germany, they're having to go to Russia to get Sputnik V. You know? Um, yes, but yeah, yes, yes, there's a vaccine called Sputnik V, yes. So, what's, so, what's, so, so if the vaccine isn't properly being fully rolled out in Europe and so forth, when are we now going to have fans? When? I'm very explaining to you guys because under this model you don't need to fill the stadiums again if you have if it's marked to the world and you have a subscription model where you now fully own the TV rights and so forth you will earn a lot more money that you earn in La Liga and so forth how is it that the winner of the Champions League earns less money than a team who finishes 16th or 15th in the Premier League that makes no sense I will repeat how is it that a team who wins the Champions League Earns less money than a team who, win, who finishes 15th or 16th in the Premier League. This is supposed to be the premier competition, the elite competition. How is it that a team who wins the most elite competition gets less money than a team who finishes 15th or 16th in the Premier League? The numbers make no sense. Um, so it says, if we can start the Super League in August, we will do it. We will do our best to start this year. We want to reach an agreement with UEFA and the other parties involved. They want, to, they, want to, they, want to, they want to try and try and do it soon, man. It's crazy. So I think this is the last one. I think this is the one. Now, this one, that, that's a bit crazy. So let's, let's end with this one. If young people find football matches too long, it's maybe because they're not interesting enough. Or maybe we have to make the football matches short. Now, obviously, I said, no. Okay, Paris, don't do that. Okay, it's 45, 45, 90 minutes. So that's too crazy. But the reason why I wanted to raise that point is because um, the young Guys, the youth are the future. And this is where I want to just, I want us to do a follow-up on so the previous video that I did. You know, this is going to be like a daily occurrence because it's, 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 it's big news. My channel is separate. I don't run a fan channel. You know, most channels you see on YouTube are fan channels. You know, like, so the, the closest thing you'll see for me is maybe like Rabona TV, something like that. That's, I just, I'm a football channel. Like the slogan for this channel is home of football analysis. So I'm about football. I'm really talking about the best of the best of football. I talk about the, 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 the legends, you know, the horsemen, you know, um, the best midfielders, the best strikers and so forth. So I'm talking about the best of the best. I'm doing this channel, you know, there are a lot of young people. And when I just look at the people that I, I, I come on the hangouts, the people that talk in the comments and so forth, these guys love football. And they love the very best. And these are guys that support Barcelona, Real Madrid, Manchester United, PSG, you know, Bayern Munich, and so forth. But most of these guys just want to see the very best. 
they want to see the very great players because these are kids who they play football as well and so forth and they just they, they marvel at guys who are at the very best of the sports that we love and these guys know that we are we are appealing to those young people who they're on xbox they're on playstation they um they are very very this is the this youth young generation is the most tech savvy they're the most informed in terms of how easy information is um is, is how, how easy they can access information so they know that for the this is a different kind of fan now again adapt or die adapt or get left behind don't you think these guys have done their research and again people say oh these guys are staying there they're horrible they are suffering financially. Unless you've seen their financial books, you can say, oh, no, no, they're, they're doing fine. Because how do you know if you've not seen their financial books? Maybe their financial books are mad. Stuff ain't adding up. We are barely breaking even here. This doesn't look good. And when are we going to get full stadiums? Vaccines are still getting rolled out. June 21st is when the UK is going to open up. That's just the UK. But still, June 21st is still, we're still in April. So, so we're going to go through all the way through May and most, most of, of June. It's, so guys, I said, look, this is, this is serious. This is serious. They're, 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 they're trying to save the... Survival of the fittest. Survival, that's the, 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 the key thing of, of life here. You know, of course, we want to help us. Of course, we want to be, be good and so forth. But... In life, you have to first worry about yourself first, then the others. And they've said, we are, going to worry, we are going to think about the others because this is going to create an ecosystem that can perhaps create um, a pool of money that can then be dispersed to now use for COVID-19 relief for, for um, other clubs and, and, and so forth. But the key thing is that it's creating a proper financial model. Because as I said again, I know how big football is. And I know that there, it's not, it has not been marketed well. It hasn't been marketed well. And I think from the Champions League, you have shafted these big teams. UEFA, you have shafted these big teams. UEFA, you pieces of crap. You absolute losers who don't, you, who don't care about racism. Or oh, now because your, 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 your money is being held, now you really care. So I couldn't give a crap about that. Chaffering can shut the heck up. You're, you're probably racist yourself. <laughs> Based on how you have dealt with racism and so forth, you're probably racist yourself. So, man, I, I feel zero sympathy for you. I just care about the Champions League. I don't care about Chefrin or you. If I don't give a crap about you, it's just the the, the, the Champions League, though. And um, but guys, this 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 is what it is. I don't think this will happen. I don't think this will pull through. I don't I don't think this Super League is going to happen. I think there's going to be a compromise. At the end of the day, there will be a compromise. There will be a compromise. There will be a compromise. Be a compromise. But I think this just shows the power of these teams and these teams knowing their potential value. And I think that the very facts of the kinds of numbers that we're hearing from this European Super League, specifically in this pandemic that has seriously hampered these teams, what are they supposed to do? Guys, use your logic here. Take your emotions away. What are you supposed to do? Pandemic. People not going into, into sta stadiums. The TV money isn't balancing the freaking books. The merch isn't balancing the freaking books. And UEFA are what offering what peanuts because it, those are compared to what these teams should be earning, because these are the biggest sports organizations on the planet. Nobody, there are no other sports brands or organizations that are followed more than your Man United, Liverpool, Real Madrid, Barcelona. No, no, they are, these guys they dwarf every other sport. The numbers don't add up. The numbers don't add up, and that's on UEFA, and perhaps even on, on the Premier League as well. The numbers don't freaking add up. Tell me what you think. Comment below. We will continue with this story. And remember, guys, we're going to be doing streams. We're going to be doing streams all week. We're going to be doing hangouts and streams all week. There's going to be a hangout on Twitch uh, Tuesday night. There's going to be a hangout on, on this Wednesday night. So we're going to be covering this one. This is the content crack. Is only, we've only got started. This content crack. We've only got started for this content crack. Like that vid. Subscribe. More love. Becoming a Patreon member. Gain access to my blog, 
get access to exclusive videos, and also gain access to the podcast of the Saturday and the Sunday Hangouts. Head over to patreon.com forward slash to gain all these goodies while also supporting your boy, HH.